Mr. Speaker, sir, at the very outset, I take this opportunity to thank Sri George Bilingdo, MLA, for this uh, special motion. This House do now discuss on the ongoing interstate boundary settlement between Meghalaya and Assam. Mr. Speaker, sir, ever since the state of Meghalaya came into existence, the interstate border dispute between Assam and Meghalaya, as defined by Northeastern Areas Reorganization Act 1971, has been a bone of contention between the states. Mr. Speaker, sir, as far as the state of Meghalaya is concerned, there are 12 areas of differences at present that were furnished by the government of Meghalaya to government of Assam by letter number POL 78-2010-209 dated 8th of August 2011. These are as follows. Number one, Tarabari area. Number two, Gizang area. Number three, Hahim area. Number four, Langpi area. Number five, Borduar area. Number six, Boklapara area. Number seven, Nongwa Mautuar area. Number eight, Kanapara Pilankata area. Number nine, Desh Tumria area. Number ten, Block one and Block two area. Number 11, Tisiar and Kanduli area. And number 12, Ratachara, Ratachara area. So status quo and developmental activities. So in the meeting of the chief ministers of both states held on the 11th of June 2008, it was decided that status quo with regard to the interstate border should be maintained and developmental activities in border areas may be allowed to continue in the interest of the people living in the border areas with prior intimation to the other government. In the wake of disturbances at different locations, Langpi and Pisiar, along the interstate border, uh, an interstate boundary, a joint meeting of the Chief Ministers of both states was held on 5th of June 2010, which was attended by the Revenue Ministers and Chief Secretaries of both the states along with other officials. And during the meeting, it was agreed that A, no new settlements or encroachment would be allowed in these areas of disputes by both the governments and that status quo would be maintained. B, the, de the development activities in the areas of disputes will be taken up after the deputy commissioners of the concerned districts jointly agree to such activities and in case they are unable to arrive at a decision the matter will be referred to the respective Chief Secretaries. C. It was also decided that a joint committee comprising the Chief Secretaries of Assam and Meghalaya would examine and prepare modalities for solving the contentious issues of the Assam-Meghalaya boundary disputes. 3. Resolution passed by the Meghalaya Assembly. It may be recalled that the Legislative Assembly of Meghalaya passed a resolution on the 16th of March 2011 to the effect that the Government of India may be requested to constitute a boundary commission as early as possible to define the interstate boundary between Meghalaya and Assam. Having regard to the constitutional provisions the relevant notifications and maps, as well as historical, ethnic, and linguistic linkages. Subsequently, the Legislative Assembly of Assam also passed a resolution 
opposing the setting up of a boundary commission. The matter was taken up with the Union Home Minister by a DO letter dated 10-8-2012, requesting him to intervene in the matter and to constitute the Boundary Commission on priority so that a lasting solution to this, uh, to, to this long pending problem is found. The Union Home Minister had convened a meeting of the two Chief Ministers where it was agreed that the ongoing dialogue at the Chief Secretary level should be carried forward expeditiously and nodal officers should be designated by both the states to assist the Chief Secretaries. The dialogue framework. The Chief Secretary of Meghalaya and the Chief Secretary of Assam met on the 21st of June 2019 at Guwahati, where it was decided to have a dialogue framework of regular talks to resolve the issues between the two states as follows. It was decided to appoint nodal officers from both states. Accordingly, the Secretary to the Government of Meghalaya Home Political Department and the Commissioner and Secretary to the Government of Meghalaya, uh, to Assam Border Protection and Development Department have been nominated as the nodal officers for interaction on matters relating to interstate border disputes between Meghalaya and Assam. The dialogue framework, number one, OC level on a weekly meet, number two, border magistrate level meeting fortnightly, number three, DC and SP level where details of schemes are to be shared between the counterparts every month. Four, issues that cannot be resolved at DC level should be taken up at nodal officer level. Five, secretary level meetings can be held to discuss issues that cannot be resolved at nodal officer level. Number six, the chief secretary level meetings will be held as and when required to discuss issues that cannot be resolved at nodal officer level. Number seven, it was also decided that autonomous district councils should also be involved while resolving issues in their respective jurisdiction. Number eight, village level meetings may be held in the border villages to instill confidence amongst the public. The information sharing, information related to government schemes and projects, including schemes being implemented by the autonomous district councils, should be shared upfront in DC level interactions so that the implementation is smooth and time bound. Cultural exchange. There should be cultural and sporting exchanges between the two states at regular intervals to promote good neighborly relations between the two states. Measures to improve policing in border areas. Mr. Deputy Speaker, sir, pending permanent solution to the existing differences and in order to instill confidence in the minds of the villagers living along the interstate border and to ensure peace and tranquility is effectively maintained in the disputed areas. A standard operating procedure, SOP, has been put in place as below. A. A police border outpost has been set up at Lejadubi and Langpi in West Khasi Hills, Saitsama and Kanduli in Genti Hills. The Meghalaya police have intensified mobile and foot patrolling, especially in the areas 
of dispute. C. Officers in charge of thanas and outposts located along the interstate border have been soliciting the support of local headmen and villagers of the border areas to maintain close surveillance and passing of information on any activities of Assam police or officials, especially in the areas of dispute. D. Magistrates and police are promptly taking action on all incidents having a bearing on law and order in the areas. E. The district police of West Khasi Hills, Jentia Hills, West Karo Hills, Riboy, etc. have been closely monitoring the developments in the border areas and constant contact with their counterparts in Assam is being maintained. F. The concerned Deputy Commissioner has been taking up matters with his or her counterpart in Assam by protesting against various developmental slash construction activities taken up by the Assam government in the disputed areas. G. To meet any law and order contingency and instill a sense of security to the people residing in the border areas, following steps are being taken. A temporary police outpost has been set up at Langpi with one sub-inspector, 30 BN personnel and one gypsy has also been provided. One and a half section of BN personnel are stationed at Malankona and SDPO of Maushundut used to pay a regular visit to the area to monitor the border situation. A fixed picket of 13 BNC personnel and 30 SF-10 along with two sub-inspectors have been deployed from West Jentia Hills District at Saba village around the clock. Riboy district has been divided into the following sectors of border management. South sector areas under Molasnai, OP, and um, Umsol, Umsolite PS jurisdiction, Deputy Superintendent of Police, Law and Order, Nongpo. To the central sector, areas under Nongpo PS, Umsning, OP, and Umsiang, OP jurisdiction, Deputy Superintendent of Police Headquarters, Nongpo. Number three, North Sector, areas under Kanapara PS, Pilankata OP, Rani, Jirang, AD Camp, and Patarkama OP jurisdiction. The Deputy Superintendent of Police T of Nongpo. A series of meetings have been held at the level of Chief Minister as well as Chief Secretaries of both of the two states with a view of solving the vexed problem through bilateral talks to identify the areas of differences and to suggest measures to resolve the differences, but a long-term solution has not emerged so far. Till date, from, till date from 1971, 31 numbers of meetings, two official ones have been held at the Chief Minister level and nine meetings at the Chief Secretary level. The six areas of differences. Sir, on 23rd of July 2021, at Shillong, in a meeting between the Chief Minister of Assam and the Chief Minister of Meghalaya, it was decided that six areas of differences, that is, one, Tarabari, two, Gizang, three, Hahim, four, Boklapara, five, Kanapara, Pilankata, and six, Ratachera, would be taken up 
for consideration in the first phase. Subsequently, another five rounds of meetings between both the Chief Ministers were held. In the meeting between the Chief Minister of Assam and Chief Minister of Meghalaya on the 6th of August 2021 at Guwahati, it was decided that regional committees headed by senior cabinet ministers and local MLAs and other officials as members will be constituted from both sides for the six areas of differences. The, reg the regional committees will be tasked to jointly visit the six areas of differences. It was decided that the criteria to be followed will be based on the five mutually agreed principles. One, historical perspective. Two, ethnicity of local population. Three, contiguity with the boundary, four, people's will, and five, administrative convenience as the yardsticks. In pursuance of the above decision, the government of Assam, by notification number BPDD 173-2017-172, dated 23rd of September 2021 and Government of Meghalaya wide notification number POL.68 slash 2015 slash 194 dated 7th of September 2021 notified the three regional committees for one Reboy, two West Khasi Hills and three East Jente Hills. The committee for Reboy was headed by the Honorable Deputy Chief Minister Shri Preston Tinsong, along with Honorable MLAs and officials of the district. The committee for West Khasi Hills was chaired by Honorable Minister Shri Renikton Lingdo Tonkar and other MLAs and officials of the district. For East Jentia Hills, the committee was chaired by Shri Snobalang Dhar, Honorable Cabinet Minister, other ministers, MLAs and officials of the district. And these committees were given the terms of reference which include inter alia to coordinate with the counterpart regional committees to jointly visit the villages, interact with the local communities and interact with other stakeholders. The regional committees were to submit their reports to their respective governments at the earliest. On the 16th of November 2021 at Guwahati, in a meeting between the Chief Minister of Assam and Chief Minister of Meghalaya, it was decided that the three regional committees of each of the states will submit their report by 30th of November 2021 to their respective Chief Ministers and may undertake further visits to their respective areas if felt necessary. The three regional committees of Assam and Meghalaya have conducted joint inspections, visited the six areas of differences, carried out consultations not only with the villagers and local communities living in the area, but also with other stakeholders like traditional heads, district councils and civil society organizations. During the process of conducting these visits, a total of 22 visits and meetings were done by these three different regional committees. The Chief Minister of Meghalaya and Chief Minister of Assam had a meeting in Guwahati on the 22nd of December 2021 and decided that the regional committees of both the states will share the reports with their counterparts by 31st of December 2021. For this end, the Chief Minister of Meghalaya and Chief Minister of Assam met on 12th of January 2022, wherein it was decided that the reports of the regional committees 
will be consolidated and the joint report of both the states will be submitted to the Chief Minister of each state so that the matter can be taken up with the Government of India. It was decided that any other area slash villages situated outside the area of difference shown in the maps submitted by Meghalaya wide letter number POL.78 slash 2010 slash 209 dated 8th of August 2011 will not be considered. Finally, based on the reports of the three regional committees on 29th of January 2022, a MOU was signed between the state of Assam and Meghalaya to record the agreed position arrived at between the two states and to conclude the process of joint consultations. The purpose of this MOU is to come is to come to a conclusion to the interstate boundary between the states of Assam and Meghalaya in respect of the six areas of differences out of the 12 areas of differences as furnished by the state of Meghalaya in 2011. The copy of the MOU has been submitted to the Union Home Minister on 31st of January 2022 for examination and consideration of the Ministry of Home Affairs. The above said matter has also been intimated to the Prime Honourable Prime Minister on the 31st of January 2022 for his intervention to ensure that the matter be given due consideration and priority by the Government of India to resolve the areas of differences. Sir, I would like, now like to go into some of the brief points and details of the MOU that was signed. West Khasi Hills District. In West Khasi Hills District, there are three areas of differences that were taken up in the first phase. Tarabari area, total eight villages were claimed by Meghalaya, namely Upper Tarabari, Walkam, two Ranket, three Thangkola, four Chingipa, Chinginde, Chinginde, five Doini, Charadonu, number six, uh, Dapolpara, number seven, Balkam, and number, number eight, Malang Salbari. Out of these villages, all eight villages will come to Meghalaya, will come under Meghalaya, and this will be based on the reports and claims given by Meghalaya through letter number POL 78 slash 2010 slash 209 dated 8th of August 2011. Gizang, under Gizang area, there are three villages. Out of these three villages, Amagao and Gohanimara will be in Meghalaya, and Malsapara, along with the Gizang Reserve Forest, will be in Assam. Number three, Hahim area. In Hahim area, out of the 12 villages that were claimed by Meghalaya, namely one, Rongthali, number two, Ranigat, number three, Atyabari, number four, Thamnaguri, slash Sonakuri, five, Mataputa, slash Umshyak, six, Maspara, number seven, Moipara, number eight, Malapara, slash Nalapara, number nine, Sumrang, and number ten, Sumrang slash Salpara and 11, uh, sorry, and 11 Lejadubi village will come to Meghalaya and one village, namely Tutiapara slash Tutia Bazar will be in Assam. B, Riboy district. In Riboy district, two areas of differences were looked into. Boklapara. Out of the two villages that were claimed in Boklapara, Boklapara village will come to Meghalaya, Jumrigao village will go to Assam. Two, Kanapara Pilankata area. In Kanapara Pilankata, parts of villages of Maikuli, Pilankata, and Borapathar stone quarry area will be in Meghalaya. Further, in Kanapara area, it is agreed that the ASTC transit camp to the police outpost number Assamese inhabited areas of number one Kanapara village 
and Dreamland Resort will be in Assam. The rest of these areas, including the entire apartment complex of Brahmaputra, Realtor, uh, Private Limited, will be with Meghalaya. In Patarkuchi area, areas inhabited by ethnic communities of Meghalaya and their religious and cultural places, if any, will be included in Meghalaya during detailed survey. In Maikuli area, uh, Muamari, Bil, Muamari Bill, which is adjacent to Maikuli playground, will remain with Assam, and Maikuli graveyard will be with Meghalaya. East Jante Hills district, Ratachera area. Out of the total five villages, three villages, namely Malidor, Ratachera, and Border Umpadit, Umpadit will be in Meghalaya. The remaining village of Baleshwar Grant Revenue Village, which is Ratha Charagao, Natan, Natanpur Tea Garden, and, Jalan, and Jalapur Tea Garden, will be part of Assam. So, summary both the states have agreed on the following. Both the state governments have agreed that no new areas of differences will be added in future beyond the already identified 12 areas of differences. Two of the total of 36 villages claimed by Meghalaya in 2011, a total of 30, 30 villages, most fully and few partially, is being recommended to be within Meghalaya. The areas mentioned above have been arrived through a tabletop exercise using spatial technologies and will be more accurately determined during the deta detailed survey to be undertaken by the Survey of India in the presence of representatives from both the state governments. A rough area of 36.79 kilometers square kilometers in these six areas are under differences. And after the detailed discussion, surveys and visits being made by regional committees, approximately 18 square kilometers plus minus will come to Meghalaya and 18 square kilometers plus minus will go to Assam. Further, I would like to state that the ownership of the land will not be affected irrespective of the administrative control by whichever state gets the particular area. I must say that the dominant criteria of these five, the, uh, of the five criteria uh, have been the will of the people of that area and the overall ethnicity of the local population. Sir, I am very happy to be able to present the progress of work done in the six of the 12 areas of differences in the Golden Jubilee year of our state. And I would like to take this opportunity to thank all the leaders in the past who have contributed to bringing this discussion to this level that we are today. And there are many chief ministers, former ministers and chief secretaries and officials who have contributed largely to the discussions and to the details of all the studies that have been done. And it is most appropriate for us to recognize the efforts that have been made. It is that process which we have taken forward and which is being moved towards a conclusion in the six areas of differences. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank the regional committees. Uh, as mentioned in my statement, regional committees have visited villages which were never visited before. And to be able to come to a conclusion in this kind of a complicated situation, it cannot be done by simply sitting in Guwahati or Shillong. It has to be done by visiting the areas and meeting the people who are being affected by this decision. And it is only because of the hard work that has been put in by the regional committees and all the work that has been done by them that we are able to arrive at the MOU with the government of Assam. So we are expecting, as I had mentioned in one of the replies in the past few days, I think it was yesterday, in fact, in the budget reply, that we have been intimated uh, verbally that there will be a meeting on the 27th of March to finally take this memorandum of understanding to a final agreement. We are still awaiting a written confirmation and a written invitation for this meeting from the MHA, 
but as I mentioned, verbally, the communication has already come to us. So while I also speak about uh, all these aspects, I know that uh, some of the members have raised different concerns about uh, different issues and different areas that uh, are contentious in one way, and uh, we had to find a way forward on how we would reach a final conclusion. And I must again stress on the fact that uh, a large number of uh, our leaders have mentioned that we need to go slow uh, in this entire issue and we need to understand and make sure that uh, we hold on. And I do appreciate the concerns of the uh, concerned um, leaders uh, in order to be able to find a solution uh, and um, make sure that uh, we take all the aspects into con consideration. Their concerns and their points they've raised uh, are, are valid. But at the end of the day, sir, we have been on this issue for the last 50 years. Sir. And while we sit here and debate about this issue, every day and every night, the people who are living in the border areas are suffering, sir. And therefore, it is the duty of the government and the duty of each and every member in this house that we do recognize those difficulties that those people at the border, our people, are facing and ensure that we move in a very committed manner to find a solution to this very, very long pending issue. And I also want to state here, sir, that while we discuss this issue, in the last many, many years, it was based on the documentation and the maps that were given. And uh, when Meghalaya produced two maps, Assam would produce four maps. If we would produce 10 documents, Assam also would produce 10 documents. And hence, we realized that um, though the historical perspective was important to keep in mind, we needed to ensure that a broader uh, consultation and a broader sense was brought into the overall discussion and the process of discussion and uh, solution to this issue. And that is why these five criteria were uh, included. And as I mentioned in my speech, that uh, the, the will of the people was very important for us, and even the ethnicity was important. And uh, therefore, I know that there were certain uh, villages that were there. And for the, for the knowledge of the house and information of the house, I would like to mention out here that recently there were some concerns that was being raised from West Khasi Hills. And uh, the, yeah, in Gizang area, there were some villages, uh, there was a village by the name of Malsapara. And uh, there were some concerns that were raised a few days back about this from the villagers. So I would like to just give the house a sense of how this happened. In each and every one of these locations in Gizang, Tarabari, Hahim, Boklapara, you name it, sir. In every village, there was a public hearing that took place. Now, in that public hearing, in the eight locations in Tarabari, and these are all Garo villages, the eight villages overwhelmingly in one voice, they said that we want to be in Meghalaya. We have video recordings of it. So while the chairman said, those people who want to be with Meghalaya, please say yes or raise your hands. And everybody raised their hands and said, we want to be with Meghalaya. And on the other side, when they ask, uh, please, those people who want to be in Assam, please raise your hands. And nobody raised their hands. So this was an overwhelming response from the people. And that is why this convinced the government of Assam and the leaders of Assam that we need to give these areas to Meghalaya. And sir, I have stated in my previous reply also that these villages in Tarabari, sir, they were under the administrative control of Assam, sir. The vote was in Assam. They were getting the energies from Assam. They were getting the power from Assam. Though we claimed it, it was more or less being controlled by the administration of Assam. But it was a people's will that finally convinced the leadership of Assam that we cannot hold on. 
if he, if we hold on to these people there will be reaction from them as they overwhelmingly want to go to meghalaya so similarly sir when we came to giza in gohani mara and amagao in gohani mara and amagao again garo villages there was this is more towards the south which means uh, it's literally like a, a square giza is like a square so if you imagine if this is meghalaya and this is assam this is how giza is it's a stretch and so the south part of it is where amagao and gohani mara is the villages there again we have video recordings of it overwhelmingly said that we want to be with meghalaya and that is what convinced assam government that we need to when we went to malsapara it was just the other way around the people in malsapara though a garo population which is quite deep into assam side and there's a huge reserve forest in between amagao and uh, and malsapara the malsapara public again on video recording it's there overwhelmingly they said that we want to be in assam and that is the basis on which we came to the conclusion now sir if we were to use a different yardstick today and say no malsapara is uh, uh, you know is garo area and malsapara we need to see that uh, uh, you know the historical facts are there with us and uh, we now rely on uh, another document to come to us uh, signed by the people uh, separately and after the public hearing is done then sir tomorrow assam will also come with the same documents to us and say well um, amagao and gohani mara people are now writing to us and saying that they want to be with assam so the the process will not come to a conclusion therefore at the end of the day we decided that we will stick with the decision of the public hearing and in the public hearing in all these areas in west khasi hills except malsapara and tutiapara that is tutia bazar the people overwhelmingly said they want to be with meghalaya and these two villages said they want to be with assam and therefore what i'm trying to clarify to the house and to the people of the state is that we went with that principle today for the government of meghalaya to change that principle would then affect the rest of the villages which have agreed to come to meghalaya and assam government after a lot of discussion and negotiation have finally agreed that since the people want to be with meghalaya even though it was in under administrative control of assam they have decided that it should be in meghalaya sir so therefore sir the, the discussions are at a stage where uh, it is almost next to impossible to get this but i have told the uh, leaders from that village and all that we will bring out the discussion in that uh, in, in the meeting that is going to be held and uh, the mou has been signed we will raise these concerns and we'll raise this issue and uh, and on 27th we will see how the discussions move forward but this is the situation as of now and uh, there were concerns sir regarding some of the areas which was mentioned about uh, the astc that is there and uh, sir in these kind of discussions as mentioned this is right at the heart of uh, of 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 guwahati and yes sir this is a, a an area which is about 20000 square feet 30000 square feet that built up has been there now in these areas sir to be very very blunt with uh, this the whole discussion that's taking place sir that while we are looking at the larger picture of seeing the people of our state and seeing that we are ensuring that we are able to get the maximum for our people so we have to discuss and see that the other side also is in line and is discussing with us and therefore when a small area like this came for discussion in fact sir we had three rounds of meetings only for this 20000 square feet three rounds sir and we kept drawing and redrawing kept drawing redrawing at one point assam said no the entire 0.08 square kilometers must come to me assam we did not agree to it sir we sat there we said no we need to discuss this once again because i don't want to go into details of um, the the lines that are there because that will create more controversy tomorrow uh, but assam had a logic on the basis of which they said that that 0.08 should go to them fully we stuck to our point saying that there should be a natural boundary and these are areas where meghalaya has been also active and the people have been active so all these concerns were um, were raised out there and in spite of assam demanding and sticking to the fact that these that this 0.08 square kilometers must be in assam so finally after discussing and negotiating with assam 
we were able to come to a conclusion where the majority of that plot of 0 0.05 square kilometers would come to Meghalaya and 0 0.03 kilometers, square kilometers uh, would go to Assam, which included the ASTC. And therefore, in this uh, entire discussion, when, as I said, we're doing a large-scale uh, discussion negotiation of such complicated uh, measures, sir, I've always maintained in my, even my opening remarks, that we will not find a perfect solution. And yes, the honorable members can keep uh, mentioning about this uh, issue and raising this issue, but we have tried to take it to the best logical conclusion. And if you see the overall discussion that's taken place in this entire uh, negotiation and discussion uh, and this resolution that we have done with Assam, we feel very strongly as a government that we have been able to keep the interest of the people living in those areas in mind. We have been able to keep the interest of the government of Meghalaya and we have been able to keep the interest of government of Assam and find a solution where it's a win-win solution for all. And yes, sir, there were certain situations where we had to sit down and uh, agree in certain terms uh, in, the, in, the, in favor of Meghalaya, which government of Assam agreed on those areas. As I said, Tarabari is a very big example of it. Four square kilometers, so 4.6 uh, something square kilometers, an area which was completely under Assam's administration. But Assam finally agreed that because the people would want it, the people's will went and they came, and they came to us. Sir. So therefore, sir, these discussions do require us to keep in mind the interest of all the stakeholders there. And with that, sir, we are able to come to this conclusion. I hope that on the 27th of this month, as I said, verbal communication has come to us that at 4.30 on 27th of this month, we will be having a meeting uh, to finally agree on the MOU. And um, we are still awaiting the final written communication from them. But I'm hopeful, sir, that we will be able to come to a final conclusion of the first six areas of differences. And I think it will be a historic moment for the state. And this will lay the principles down for the next phase of discussion. So what is very important, sir, to understand is that in areas like Pisiar, Khanduli, areas like uh, uh, Langpi, which are very, very uh, sensitive areas, we have been able to push this principle of will of the people in the first phase. And with this discussion going forward, the will of the people in these locations in the next six phase also will be very important. And this is a clear indication of what, what kind of uh, solution we're looking at in the coming days. And I think the greatest uh, you know, uh, plus point for us is that these defined principles will help us in the solution and finding a way forward in the next areas which are even more complicated than where we are right now. So with these few words, sir, and uh, I hope I have uh, you know, clarified the concerns, and I'm sure that this is a very important topic, so there will be many concerns. But with these few points and clarification, sir, I would like to resume my seat. Thank you, sir.